everybody, welcome back to another exciting chemistry video lesson. Uh, in this lesson, I'm going to focus our attention on what's called limiting reactants. Um, in previous videos, what we did was we looked at uh, what stoichiometry is, and uh, we also looked at stoichiometry calculations. So if you haven't watched those video lessons, I strongly recommend you go back and watch those before you watch this one, because I'm kind of assuming you've already seen uh, those videos. So, Okay, so here we go. The question we're going to look at today is how many grams of ammonia would be formed when 12.1 grams of hydrogen reacts with 42.1 grams of, of nitrogen. All right, so first thing we want to focus on is what we're looking for, okay? What we're looking for is the mass, in this case the grams, of ammonia. So we're going to start there, okay? And we look at what information they give us. So we're, this is a, the ammonia is going to be formed when 12.1 uh, grams of hydrogen reacts with 42.1 grams of nitrogen. So our goal is to find this amount of ammonia at the end of the reaction. So we're going back to the after part. So in this case, we're looking for the mass of ammonia formed, which means the amount here when we are finished. So this is what we're looking for uh, when we're complete. So they give us information here regarding the hydrogen, which is 12.1 grams, and they give us the mass of the uh, nitrogen, which is 42.1 grams of nitrogen. Now what I like to do is take the information and organize it above the table. Now these are the measurements that are made. Now remember, in the balanced equations, the coefficients rec represent the number of moles for us. That's what we're going to be focusing on most of the time. There's other things it represents, but for now, it's going to be representing the number of moles of, of materials that are reacting and being produced. Uh, and remember, we cannot use the masses. So the masses cannot be used when we are calculating the number of moles. Okay, I'm sorry, when we're using the balanced equation. So stoichiometry, the first thing we do is take our measurements and convert those to moles so we can compare them. Now, the other thing we want to think about is before this reaction starts, we don't have any of the ammonia, right? The ammonia isn't in the reaction yet. We only have the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So if we were to look at this and see what this looks like, if we translate this, what the reaction should look like is it should look like this, where the only thing we have in the container before the reaction happens is just the hydrogen, which are the white molecules, and the nitrogen, which are the light blue ones. That's the only thing that's in the container are those numbers of molecules. Now, the number of particles in the container that I'm drawing here have no, it's just showing us what's there. Don't worry about how many right now. We're just looking at the representation of what the picture would look like if we were to look at this at the microscopic level. So if we go back to the equation, first thing I want to do is get rid of the mass. Okay, I want to get rid of that mass and focus on, on the number of moles. So that I'm going to do here in these calculations. Okay, so what I've calculated using molar masses are the moles of the nitrogen and hydrogen, and I plug them into the table. Now, if we take a look at the reaction, when the reaction takes place, it's going to produce the ammonia, because there isn't any produced yet. When it does that, this is going to go down by x, right? It's going to go down by a certain value. This is going to go down by 3x, and this is going to go up by 2x. So that's the change that's going to happen. The chemical reaction is going to happen. These are going to get used up and this is going to be forming. So if you think about this, one of these two reactants or both are going to run out and that's when the reaction will stop producing the products. We can no longer make any products if we don't have one of the other reactants available. That's what's referred to as the limiting reactant. Anytime I give you the two reactants or whatever, however many reactants there are, um, you always have to figure out which of these two will run out. One of them has to go to zero. Not both of them. It's possible, but for the most part, usually if you're given two masses or two quantities, one of them is going to go to zero. All right, I'm going to show you how I find the limiting reactant. Okay, to find the limiting reactant, we have to figure out which one is going to run out. So in order to figure that out, we have to take two things into consideration in order to figure out how something is going to run out. One, how much of it we have. And two, how much of it we use. Okay, so if we look at the masses, a lot of students want to go ahead and say, oh, well, I have 12 grams of the hydrogen and 42 grams of the nitrogen. I have way more nitrogen, so therefore the hydrogen has to run out. But remember, we cannot use the masses. Do not use masses. We have to go back and use the moles. So I come down here and I realize, oh, wait, I only have one and a half moles of nitrogen. Remember, the number of moles tells us how much we have. While I have 5.99 moles of the hydrogen. So clearly I have way more hydrogen than I do of the nitrogen. So again, that masses can be misleading because remember the molar masses are very different for these two substances. So I definitely have way more hydrogen than I do the nitrogen, but I use way more 
hydrogen than I do the nitrogen because every time I take make the reaction I have to take one of the nitrogens and three of the hydrogens so I'm using this much faster the hydrogen much faster than I am the nitrogen so how do I figure that out as I do have a lot of it but I'm using a lot of it so what I do is I just pick one of the two reactants just pick whichever one you want I'm gonna pick the hydrogen because I think because there's so much of it and the ratio is a one to three this doesn't look like a one to three ratio to me I'm gonna pick the hydrogen as my substance here. You don't have to worry about making that guess. You can just randomly pick whichever one you want. It won't make a difference. So I'm going to create this little question for myself. How many moles of hydrogen do I need if I have 1.502 moles of nitrogen? So I'm just going to do a little calculation here. I'm going to say if I have this many moles of nitrogen, how much hydrogen would I need to make? And I'm going to ignore the hydrogen. I don't care about how much hydrogen is here right now. So when I do this calculation, I'm going to go from one mole of the nitrogen to three moles of the hydrogen because for every one mole of nitrogen I need three moles of hydrogen. So when I do that reaction, or I'm sorry, that calculation, I end up with 4.506 moles of hydrogen. So this is the amount of hydrogen that I need, amount needed for the reaction. Okay, that's what this number is. So the 4.5 is how much I actually need. How much do I actually have? I have 5.99. Therefore, I have too much. Therefore, since I have too much, this has to be my excess reactant, and this would have to be my limiting reactant. Okay, So therefore, that would go to 0. So again, I'm taking this number and comparing it back to this one. So what this is saying is that if I had 1.502 moles of nitrogen, I need to have 4.506 moles of hydrogen. That would, If I had that enough, if I put that number in here, if I put 4.5 here, then they would both go to 0. That's referred to as the perfect stoichiometric ratio, that they're both in sync with each other, that they're exactly the 1 to 3 ratio. In this case, it's not. It's a little bit higher in the amount of hydrogen. So therefore, this would be my excess and how much would be left over. Now, that's really important because if I have extra left over, it's going to be in the container at the end of the reaction. And a lot of people miss that part. So now that I know my limiting reactant, remember what I'm trying to find is the mass of the ammonia. When this runs out and goes to zero, it will stop making the ammonia. So what I have to do now is I have to use my limiting reactant uh, to, find, to do the final calculation. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to use my limiting reactant to find that mass of the ammonia. Now there's a couple things I could do. Um, you could use this to solve for x, and in this case we can see that x would be 1.50, and then you could solve for this right away if you wanted. So you could say 1.502 minus x equals 0, so therefore x has to be equal to 1.502 moles. Well in that case, if that's what that number is, I could use that 2x, and I could figure out, doubling that number, that the number of moles should be 3.004. That's a quick little way to do it. My numbers are kind of getting screwed up there for some reason. I don't know why. But that's how many moles I should get. Okay, so if that's a little confusing for you, that's fine. I'll show you another way to calculate this. All right, I could just use the stoichiometry. I could say, you know what, if I have 1.502 moles of the nitrogen, I can go ahead and use the stoichiometry of 1 to 2 ratio. So for every 1 mole of nitrogen, there are two moles of ammonia. So therefore, my number of moles that I would produce, as I said er earlier at the top, there would be 3.004 moles of the oops, nitrogen, or I'm sorry, ammonia. And then I can find the mass using the molar mass. Okay, so when I finish with this and I do the calculation with the molar mass, I end up with 51.2 grams of ammonia. And that would be the answer that I'm looking for. Don't forget, this is a good thing to write down because I remember I want the mass of ammonia, not the number of moles of ammonia. So to recap really quick with the limiting reactants, what I did was I converted the numbers that they gave me into the moles. Okay, that was the first thing to do. Get rid of these measurements, convert them to moles right away. Once I get the number of moles, I then need to figure out my limiting reactant. So I just pick one of the two reactants and uh, solve for it. Now if I wanted, if I, if I did do the opposite, if I converted instead of going from the moles of hydrogen, if I went to the nitrogen instead, then I would take the 5.990 moles 
of the hydrogen and I would just do a little conversion which would be a one mole of nitrogen to three moles of the hydrogen. If I do that calculation I'm going to end up with 1.997 moles of nitrogen. So what that would mean is that I would need that number of moles of nitrogen. So I'd come back and compare it. Wait, I only have 1.4. I don't, or I'm sorry, 1.5. I don't have enough. Therefore, limiting reactant. So it doesn't matter which way you do this. E either method would get you the limiting reactant in the end. Okay, and then I just take my limiting reactant, whatever I find to be the limiting reactant, and I convert that to the uh, product or whatever I'm looking for, and then convert that to mass. Okay, so at the end of this reaction, what this would look like when you're finished, and this is another reason why I like the BCA table because you get a lot of these questions that ask you about the after. After I'm finished, I'm not going to just have ammonia in that container, right? I'm going to actually have hydrogen gas in there as well because that's my excess reactant that's left over. So after the change in the reaction happens, this is what the reaction would look like. So the before and then the after. All right, so we've got to keep in mind that we've got to look at the after part. That's way more important is to look at that after, noticing that I have excess amount of this. Now, question is how much excess do I have? Well, now that's pretty easy because now I know that I started with 5.990 moles of the hydrogen. I can subtract out how much. This is now how much is used up, right? Because if this is the amount of hydrogen I need, that's the amount that's going to be used in the reaction. So 4.506 moles of the hydrogen. Subtract those two out, and I end up with a number of 1.484 moles of hydrogen that remain and if I wanted to I can convert that to grams which would come out to about three grams of hydrogen remaining so that's the amount that's excess afterwards and that's tricky for students to get in the beginning but I think by using the table and organizing your work for this makes it a lot easier to see okay so I uh, hope that uh, helped you guys out and I will talk to you soon